regreso aquí en Auto 060. Estamos llegando al último segmento de este show en que hemos hablado del Miami International Auto Show, eh, de la expedición uh, Iceland Expedition que hicimos con Subaru. Eh, y ahora, eh, retrocediendo un poco en el tiempo, antes de ir a Iceland, estuvimos en Arizona para manejar el nuevo Rolls-Royce Wright, el nuevo modelo de la firma británica. Ahí vamos a hablar con... Uh, we're switching now to English because we're going to talk to Richard Carter, Director of Global Communications at Rolls-Royce Motor Cars about the 2014 Rolls-Royce Wright. Well, Richard, thank you very much for this uh, very unique opportunity to drive a new Rolls-Royce. And, and, and I, when I say unique, I mean, I think I'm, I'm using the proper word because Rolls-Royce is very unique. Yeah, it is, uh, Javier. You're absolutely correct. Um, the uniqueness of a Rolls-Royce lies in a couple of things. One, of course, they're very rare. Uh, we don't make huge numbers of these cars, and neither will we ever make huge numbers of them. So when a Rolls-Royce goes by, time stands still for a moment. Um, wow, there goes a Rolls, and then it's gone, and you don't see another one for uh, hopefully a month or two or three. Secondly, of course, they are the world's most luxurious automobile. The fantastic leather and wood and marquetry and inlays and all the rest of it that goes into the making of these cars makes them utterly unique. No two Rolls Royces are ever the same. And then thirdly, they're very beautiful. They're timeless in their design. Um, I think uh, you're looking, as we sit here in, uh, in Arizona, you're looking across at our new Rolls Royce Wraith and You take a look at that car, it's, it's got a fantastic, wonderful, timeless design. It's very beautiful, very desirable. Yeah, it has all those uh, Rolls-Royce characteristics, but it's very different too. Uh, yes, the Wraith, I think, is quite different to what we've done before. Um, we wanted to build a car that was uh, a little more uh, aggressive, perhaps, just a little more um, the dark side of Rolls-Royce. We say that here we've got a car which has a hint of the noir, Uh, and so we designed and built, interestingly enough, a fastback style coupe uh, which speaks of power and strength and agility. It's the fastest Rolls Royce ever built, the most powerful Rolls Royce ever built. Um, and when you drive it, you'll find that it has a tremendous capability on the road, which some people would say is sporty. Uh, we never use the word sporty. We talk about agile and, and powerful. Um, but it's a very... Um, It's a very stunning design. It's a, it's a very fetching design when you see it. Can we talk a little bit about those uh, mechanical characteristics, the engine, the transmission, a little bit like that? Sure. Um, it's a 6.75 liter twin turbocharged V12. All our cars are V12. Uh, fantastically powerful, engineered to give typical Rolls Royce characteristics of lots and lots of low end torque. Uh, what we call waftability, you pull away in, in silence with tremendous amounts of power. This particular car now is a, is, is a little shorter than the Ghost, so we've shortened the wheelbase slightly, we've broadened the track and lowered the whole car a bit, giving it that slightly more aggressive, slightly more um, athletic, uh, athletic look. It has a seamless eight-speed gearbox and it has a fantastic piece of technology called satellite-aided transmission. Yeah, what's that? Well, um, it's, uh, we were the world's first with SAT. Uh, as you know, I mean, a car is located on the face of the earth by the, uh, uh, by the GPS system. But what we've done is we've linked the GPS information via a computer to the gearbox management system. So the car through GPS is seeing well ahead of what the driver can see. It knows that, for example, you're going to be coming off a highway and there's a traffic circle just after you come off the highway. And it will therefore go ahead and select the correct gear for you, way ahead of you having to do it yourself. It will always be in the right gear, come what may. It's a sort of a butler quietly in the background, uh, changing gears for you and making sure that your car is effortlessly always in the right gear. And it just adds to the effortless experience of, of, of driving a Rolls Royce. Yeah, and enjoying them. I mean, I, most of the, in some countries, like in Asia, and some countries, people want it to be driven. But this car is more, more uh, this is attractive a, for people who want to drive it. Javier, you're quite right. This is a self-driver's car. Yeah. Um, it's true to say that uh, certainly in Southeast Asia and China, 
Uh, most of our customers are, um, are chauffeur-driven, but certainly here in the United States and in, in most of Europe uh, and elsewhere in the Middle East, uh, chauffeurs are not uh, particularly often, uh, often used. Um, this is unquestionably a self-driving car. This is a car you want to drive yourself. It's the ability to get into a Rolls-Royce and have some real fun behind the wheel and not have to be driven at all. Having said that, if you look at China, for example, um, which is one of our biggest markets just behind the United States, the younger Chinese are, um, are themselves changing patterns quite rapidly. And many of them, in a sense, don't want to be like dad, who, who was chauffeured in his car yeah. everywhere he went. The younger Chinese entrepreneurs, they want to drive as well. They're um, far more involved in doing their own thing. Yeah, and enjoying it. So <clears throat> when, when people always uh, refer to something fabulous, they talk about this is the Rolls Royce, yes, this, this yes, is the Rolls yeah, Royce. Yeah, and yeah, that. you're right. You're and right. then they talk about the price. I mean, this, yeah. is not, this is a very exclusive car. But what makes it exclusive? I mean, like, we already talk about the technology and all of that, but what is it that, what justifies that? Because some people say, okay, if I had the money, people who say that obviously don't yes. have the money. No, I, but what is it that justifies we, uh, I that? I mean, you know, we always say if you have to ask the price, you can't hey, afford hey, exactly, it. Exactly, um, absolutely. But if you're asking me what is the substance of the car, what is the value that you're getting for exactly. this rather large price that you're paying? Well, Javier, there's a few things. One is, of course, it's a superbly engineered motor car. Um, it's magnificently constructed, beautifully put together. Nothing is left to chance. Everything is hand, um, hand built at the home of Rolls Royce in Goodwood in South England. Um, it is a it is a true masterpiece of engineering. Secondly, the um, the luxury and comfort within the car, the materials that are used on the inside of the car, the leathers and the woods, um, the fabrics and so on and so forth, all of that is of the very, very best. So what we create with this car is we create a piece of jewelry almost, a very, a very exclusive piece of jewelry, a one-off. Each Rolls-Royce is different. Uh, and then we have what we call our bespoke program. Um, Uh, it's a personalization service so that you can ask us to design and create um, all sorts of personalized additions to your Rolls Royce, uh, cigar humidors, um, champagne refrigerators, uh, bars, uh, special television enclosures, uh, jewelry safes, uh, all sorts of things that you can come up with and say, Uh, I'd like you to put this into my Rolls Royce. Can you design it and engineer it in? And we will always say to our customers, yes, of course we can. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a, it's a beautiful car. Um, I, I can't wait to go on and drive it. And, <laughs> and as we are sitting here, yeah. as you say, people go around and look at it. And yes. I say, it's so unique. It's like, it really is a piece of art. Any cars, I think, now are, have to be good. And everything has to be perfect. Yes. But this elevates... The, the level. I mean, yes, to, I mean, you, to you, really, really uh, a place where nowhere else is, I, I, nobody else is, right? I, that's absolutely true. I mean, go and have a, you, you will, Javier, go and have a really close look at the car. It is, it is truly magnificent. It's truly beautiful. Look at the paintwork on that car. No such thing as orange peel at Rolls Royce. Forget it. It's all gorgeous. It's all magnificently done. As I say, hand built by our uh, skilled craftspeople in the south of England. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. We're going to go and enjoy the car, and maybe one day we'll go uh, to see where they build the cars. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> if you came to Rolls Royce and you saw the home of Rolls Royce where they build the car, uh, a great deal of what I'm saying to you would, would be instantly recognizable, and you would understand why it is that there's such tremendous value built into each Rolls Royce. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, uh, and uh, we're going to enjoy the drive. Thanks. It's been my thank great you. pleasure talking to you. That was Richard Carter, Director of Global Communications and Rolls Royce Motor Cars uh, during the test drive of the Rolls-Royce ride in Phoenix, Arizona. Así que estamos llegando aquí al final de, de este show, Auto 060, aquí en Cristina Radio Network. Eh, vayan otra vez a la página de Facebook, facebook.com slash auto 060, donde van a poder ver toda la información, todos los videos, las fotos que complementan este show aquí en la radio, donde van a poder disfrutar los videos. Y realmente les recomiendo todos, la verdad, porque ha sido una, un par de semanas bastante eh, increíbles manejando vehículos espectaculares como el Rolls Royce Ride, el Subaru y eh, toda la información del Auto Show de Miami. Gracias a DJ Cafa y en los controles en la producción de este show. Yo soy, Autos, yo soy Javier Mota, esto es Auto 060 y los espero en la próxima edición aquí en Cristina Radio Network.
Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.